welcome back to another episode. Okay, so this time I am going to give a practical demonstration on the difference between the new firmware 2.0 autofocus modes and autofocus hold. Because there seems to be more confusion now about autofocus hold. Uh, to give you an idea, autofocus hold keeps the subject distance the same when all of a sudden an object comes between you and the subject. It will maintain focus here and ignore this. However, stability mode does not do that. Stability mode is totally different. It doesn't care if something ends up in between the subject and the camera. It only lessens the amount of uh, focus change in regards to depth. I know it sounds confusing. I'm going to give an exact demonstration through the viewfinder. So, you know, with the DFA 15450, so you can hear the autofocus as it's being activated. And from stability mode, we are then going to move over to trackability mode so you can see the difference. So the demonstration is autofocus hold off in stability mode, autofocus hold on high in stability mode. So you can practically see exactly how long it takes for the autofocus to re-engage and, you know, and also demonstrate I demonstrate the amount of time uh, it actually takes so that you can have an object obscure the path of your subject while maintaining the original focus target of the subject so that the lens isn't focusing back and then you lose track of the subject itself. Uh, yeah, so let's just get into the practical demonstration. Very simple, quick video, and uh, yeah, it's going to be it. Okay, so we're going to start in stability mode and autofocus hold on high. Uh, this is a practical demonstration, so I have this chair with some stuff on it in front of my car. I'm going to focus on the car and then pan over and we'll see how long it takes for the autofocus to re-engage once I change uh, the focus point. So basically what this is doing is allowing a set amount of time for an object to come between the subject and the camera without changing the actual focus distance. Now we'll switch over to stability mode and turn, well I'm in stability mode right now, uh, but what we're going to do is turn off the autofocus hold and look at stability to see what the difference is. And as being as transparent as possible, as you can see on uh, the menu here, I am, I am on emphasize stability. And then after this, we will go to the tracking to see the difference uh, with those. So let's just get this lined up here. Okay, so autofocus hold off in stability mode. And as I move around the vehicle, you can see there is not really any autofocus happening. But this here, you can clearly tell stability mode with autofocus hold off. It doesn't care if something ends up in between the subject and the camera. It will immediately focus on whatever comes in between the two. Now let's move over to trackability mode. Okay, so now we're in trackability mode and as you can hear, with every incremental difference, the autofocus is being engaged. So, now that you've seen the video, uh, hopefully it helps explain what uh, autofocus hold, or the differences between autofocus hold and stability versus trackability mode. They are all different. Trackability focuses on, literally, well, I guess 
pun, semi-intentional, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so the autofocus trackability mode literally will drive the lens with every incremental depth difference of whatever subject you're uh, focusing on. Stability mode lessens the amount of focus difference uh, in, in regards to changes in depth. Autofocus hold only cares about an object coming out of nowhere to obscure the distance between the subject and the camera. So those are the three differences between all those autofocus modes. Hopefully this video demonstration helps you understand uh, the parameters of each system, how they work, um, you know, to be able to better get the shots that you're looking for, or if you're missing shots, uh, you know, and they're slightly out of focus, at least hopefully it gives you an idea as to what to look at in regards to settings to alter them in order to, again, gain the shots that you're looking for. And that's pretty much it. If you like the video, leave a like. If you have not already, please do subscribe. Always helps out. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you want to support the channel, that info is at the bottom of the description. And uh, if you have been following the Facebook post that I made, uh, it appeared as though I had a firmware issue uh, in regards to loss of autofocus. Uh, but it actually turned out to be, I guess, a dirty autofocus sensor. There must have been a mi very, very microscopic, stubborn piece of something on there. Uh, I took a long time. I thoroughly, thoroughly cleaned the whole inside of the camera. Sensor, focus screen, autofocus sensor over and over and over and over and over again. Like I went at it for a good 45 minutes straight. And uh, I'm pleased to announce that the camera is back to 100%. So... For all those who were following the Facebook post in the K3 Mark III group, thank you for all your input. It was much appreciated. I looked at every possible avenue. I took all your suggestions. I tried everything. Uh, the one weird thing was it only happened after 200 millimeter focal length. So that was quite bizarre. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, thank you to Jeff. You know, which Jeff, sorry, I, I don't recall your last name offhand. <laughs> um, uh, for sharing his uh, camera settings uh, so we could do a bit of extra troubleshooting. So I am going to be doing a video in regards to importing and exporting your actual camera settings. Uh, so that was a good trial to see uh, how well it works. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go. <laughs> You'll see me in my next video. I'm out.